But tonight, there's a Tea Party tidal wave, and we're sending a message to them. Whether they won or lost. And we're not going to be quiet now. The Tea Party made election night an act of rebellion. We have made Washington listen. With at least 39 Tea Party-backed candidates headed to D.C., they hope to put the brakes on the president's agenda. Tea Party activists like to say it's not just no, it's hell no. The Tea Party Express packed up its things in Las Vegas today. Finished. Still smarting from Sharon Engel's loss to Harry Reid. They weren't so sure how the slogans of the campaign Lower taxes, smaller, smarter government, less overreach and intrusion will become policy. What should these folks do day one to cut the deficit? Well, you know, we're going to have to make cuts across the board. First of all, no one ever said this was going to be easy. What programs do we cut? I don't know. In a sign of what may be a conservative culture clash, today Tea Party champion Senator Jim DeMint warned incoming insurgents to fight being co-opted by fellow Republicans. He wrote, the establishment is much more likely to try to buy off your votes than buy into your limited government philosophy. Tea Partiers may even challenge John Boehner as Speaker of the House and will push Republicans to repeal health care reform. Our job is to make those politicians feel the heat if they haven't seen the light. As for the next presidential race, the movement may already have its front runner. Sarah Palin is the Tea Party's most effective backer. Two years from now, she may want their support. Ben Tracy, CBS News, Las Vegas.